Currently I teach at King County High School. I'm the ag teacher, which is all the way down the end of the hallway. Um, because I have not only my room, but I also have the greenhouse that I'm able to work in. The tree project out at King County High School started off with my natural resources and ecology class. We went outside and we were looking at weed species identification and we were hoping maybe we could find an invasive species or two. We weren't sure what we were gonna find because the school really is a monoculture if you think about it. There's so much grass that's everywhere because of fields and everything. We went outside and behind the stadium, there's a culvert where all the water drains to. And we walked all through there and we found erosion. And the kids were like, here's erosion. Like it's right here, it's happening right here. Because the water goes down, it goes underneath and it goes to the creek that's across the street, which eventually goes out to Churn Creek. And they were like, you know, we should do something about this. We should change this. You know, maybe we could do something. I said, okay. And Isabel Junkin, the Chester River Association, the river keeper, happened to come in not too many days later, handed me her business card and said, do you know anywhere where you need to plant some trees? Hmm. <laughs> so we sat down and we looked at the whole project and we were trying to figure out, you know, where all the water drained. Um, DNR actually came out and did a study and we sit smack dab in the middle between Churn Creek and Riley's Mill Branch. So we affect actually the Sassafras and the Chester River. Um, so there was a section at Wharton Park and a section at the high school where we sat down, put together the proposal, and the kids worked on species identification, native species, selecting different trees, trying to really figure out what we could do. And the kids put together a presentation down to the school board. The school board you know, was very willing to listen and they accepted the whole project. We also talked to county commissioners because of Wharton Park and they were, um, they were very supportive as well. Mr. Billy Short did ask that we did not plant sweet gum and we planted no sweet gum trees whatsoever. <laughs> um, and so we put our proposal through for the grant and they said it looked great and we were awarded $25,000 which was definitely more than we had originally anticipated. So then we sat down again, amended the grant, and um, worked closely with Kingstown. Cindy King was really instrumental in helping us select local nurseries and timing of different things and just making sure everything was structured right from that end. Um, turned the grant back in and they awarded us $50,000 total. I mean, and, and that's why we call it the tremendous project. It's, I mean, because the trees, but I mean, it just became huge because it's about 1,800 trees and shrubs total and about 10,000 perennial native plants to restore that area. The students are vested. They're so excited and they're so proud of the entire project. The next step in the project is going to be to let everything grow. Please let it continue to rain. Um, everything will grow and then when we come back to school the kids are going to propagate we're going to pick the seeds we're going to plant the seeds and we're just going to continue with that meadow we're just going to continue to naturalize that area I'm working with the National Audubon Society to get grant funding for birdhouses um, so we can have and, and not just you know cute little birds that will come out it's going to be with carpentry as well as the art department and we're going to work to have raptor boxes so you know we have a good balance in that ecosystem that's out there because you know there's going to be snakes and there's going to be mice and there's we've already seen an increase in the insects it's amazing just to walk through with just the clover being able to grow i mean it's been incredible and then this summer we have a bee project that's also going to be going through um, CES here is supporting us with some grant funding. We're gonna put bee boxes out and there's going to be a video inside that will have a live stream that will go to the website. So you can actually watch the bee hive during the day. So the kids will actually be able to see when it's hot, you'll be able to see the drones working to make everything cooler. I mean, it's, and again, it's interaction. It's getting the kids to look at things differently, getting them involved, getting them immersed in nature. Classrooms shouldn't have walls. You should be outside. I, I'm not your traditional teacher. I didn't wake up and say, I'm gonna be a teacher when I get older. I started out in industry. My undergraduate is from Delaware Valley College in uh, horticulture. 
And I worked in industry. I worked in wholesale greenhouse, um, gosh, for multiple years. It was hot, it was hard, but I absolutely loved it. Um, but kids kind of change you. You know, I have, I have two children. I have um, Will, who's gonna be 10, and Lizzie, who's 14. Um, and it, it kind of changed some things. I was doing some private landscaping and um, timing just, it, it was really hard because when they were home, I was out and things just, it, so that's kind of how I stepped out of that industry for a little bit. Um, I got very involved with Girl Scouts um, and was very involved in Sunday school and kind of realized I really enjoyed those moments with those kids. Boy Scouts, you know, Girl Scouts, when we're putting up tents and we're tying knots and I'm showing them, okay, this is how we, you know, make a fire that's safe. And it's funny, Girl, Sc Girl Scouts make little fires, Boy Scouts make big fires. <laughs> but having the kids understand that it was, it was their responsibility. And if they didn't do it right, you wouldn't eat or if you didn't tie your tent right, it was your tent that was gonna be blowing all over the place in the middle of the night if there was a storm or wind. And that's where I realized I really enjoyed teaching. I, know, I knew walking into the classroom, I never, ever, ever wanted to be the class where somebody walks in and goes, oh, I have to go to that class next. I always, always wanted to be that teacher and have that setting where the kids were excited to come. Um, now my issue is how do I keep them out? <laughs> Which I'll take because, I mean, nine times out of 10, I, I eat lunch with my kids. Like they come through my door and they become my kids. Because people will come into my room and immediately judge that, well, that student's not doing what everybody else is doing or this student has their head down. But I can tell anybody who walks in my room, that student has their head down because Either they're out of their ADHD medicine, something's going on at home, they don't feel good. You have to know your kids. You have to be able to read them. I, I had a student, second year I was teaching, I will never, ever, ever forget it. He was one of those kids that everybody had a really hard time with because he was really, really squirrely. Um, just didn't conform, didn't do what everybody else did. So I always had like an alternate assignment for him. He always did something a little bit different. and and. That's what I think teaching should be. It shouldn't be the, you know, cookie cutter. Everything shouldn't be the same. But the one day he was really, really off. And I asked him, come and have lunch with me. And he did. And I just very simply asked him what was wrong. And he sat down and he cried. And I'll, I'll, here I am sitting with a, a young man. He was a senior. He had been kicked out of his house. He hadn't had a shower in four days. He didn't know who to talk to. He didn't know what to go do. And a lot of the times, those are the kids that we need to reach. Those are the kids that people don't know what to do with. And not everybody comes to school with the same tools in their toolbox. Not everybody gets it. Not everybody, not everybody has the same opportunities. And those are the ones that I try harder to connect with.